episode of OBGYN Reacts. Today's episode is I didn't know I was pregnant, which always seems to be a favorite and we always seem to learn something. If you missed a pinned comment in the last video, half of all merch revenue for the entire month of June, which is Pride Month, is going to the Black Trans Advocacy Coalition, a group fighting daily to decrease disparities and inequities faced by the Black transgender community. I will also put a link to their foundation in the description box. Like 50% of you that watch these videos aren't subscribed, which is totally fine, but we're getting really close to half a million people, which I think is mind blowing. My mind was blown when I hit 100K and the idea that I'm almost at 500K is, I can't even comprehend it. If you'd like to help me get there and you're not subscribed, hit that subscribe button. In 1982, 17-year-old Risa met the love of her life. Five years later, the couple is happily married and enjoying their life together. In January, I started getting sick. So we decided to get a pregnancy test. Sure enough, I was pregnant. Two months later, Risa still hasn't seen a doctor. I was very afraid of doctors. She was a couple of months pregnant and she hadn't seen a doctor because she was fearful of seeing a doctor, which is something that I hear commonly. It's okay to have that fear. Just know that most of us are on your side and we will work with you to overcome that. It was probably the last week of March and it was in the middle of the night. I woke up, bad cramps. That's when I noticed I was bleeding. Uh, John! <laughs> so I got up and went in there. And uh, I realized that she'd miscarried. So she had not seen a doctor yet and woke up in the middle of the night with lots of cramping and bleeding and then ended up having a miscarriage. I have a video on miscarriage that I am prepping and will be up in the next couple of weeks. It was traumatic and it was scary and it was sad. The next morning when I got up, I had already stopped any type of bleeding, any type of anything. But I called the emergency room and spoke to the advice nurse and she suggested that I come in for a DNC. So this is interesting. A DNC is a dilation and curatage and it's a procedure that we do sometimes in gynecology and not related to pregnancy, but it also sometimes is done to clean out the uterus in cases where a body has either not recognized that a miscarriage happened or in situations where a miscarriage is ongoing, but your body is not able to complete the process on its own. Idea that she would need to come in for a DNC if she had had the pain and cramping and bleeding and then all of that stopped is, is unusual. You know, I don't know what practice styles were like in 1982, but certainly wouldn't be a typical recommendation now. I would want her, however, to come in for follow-up to make sure her hormone levels got back down to zero, to make sure she wasn't anemic and also to check her blood type because if she has a negative blood type that is the rh factor in your blood type so if she's a negative or o negative or ab negative then she would need a shot of rogam just to combat any blood type abnormalities that could come if the fetus had been a positive blood type. That's a complicated discussion that I'm not even getting into in this video. It would make a whole uh, video at some point in the future about it but she would need to be seen for that reason as well. My sickness stopped, like immediately. Never did get a cycle though, a menstrual cycle. I kept saying, oh, I'll go to the doctor, I'll go to the doctor. By the beginning of the summer, Risa notices that she's gained about 20 pounds. She also notices swollen legs and feet. I was eating more Chinese food, which had a lot of sodium in it. So therefore I thought that was causing me to swell. So that's interesting. She says, I had the miscarriage and then I never had a period. I was having weight gain and I was having swelling, but she never took another pregnancy test. And she says she didn't go to the doctor because she was fearful of physicians. So this is a setup for uh, an undiagnosed pregnancy. When you think you have a miscarriage, but you are not wanting to or able to get follow-up after that and your period doesn't come back. Take a pregnancy test. When in doubt, take a pregnancy test. And it was 6.26 in the morning. I like, I feel off. I feel delirious. I feel weird. I felt dizzy and blurred vision. You know, I saw like two or three of John. And then she just collapses. I'm looking at her, I'm scared to death. I, I call 911. She's shaking really bad. That was the last thing I remember. It's the worst thing I've ever experienced in my life. I mean, I'm losing my wife and I'm scared. Whew, 
I would imagine that is terrifying. My guess, since we know this is going to end with her having a baby, is that she has now experienced eclampsia. So she woke up not feeling right. That is a common complaint with people who have preeclampsia. And sometimes it's related to high blood pressure, and sometimes it's just related to the overall pathophysiology of preeclampsia. But a lot of times people just report feeling off, and then their blood pressure is high, and they're spilling protein in their urine. So it sounds like that was probably what was going on. She also says she had some vision changes, which is a sign of worsening or severe preeclampsia. Always concerns me if someone is reporting like tunnel vision or significant all of a sudden vision changes because that often precedes a seizure, which is eclampsia, which sounds like what's happening here. I can't imagine how terrifying that would be for a significant other who is watching it happen and has no idea what is going on because it's scary even for the healthcare team when we know what's causing it. That I'm sure was extremely traumatic. Risa arrives at the emergency room unconscious. Did you know your wife was pregnant? I'm like, whoa, 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 wait a minute. This can't be. I'm like, but how? And she said, you lost one of the twins but the other one survived. So it sounds like what happened is that they think she was pregnant with twins and she miscarried one of them somewhere around 12 weeks. That probably explains why her symptoms largely went away after that happened. She was entering the second trimester where often people feel better. Most of the time when that happens, it's not like she describes where you have a miscarriage with pain and bleeding. It's more like we do an ultrasound and one of the fetuses no longer has a heartbeat. I have seen this many times, but it's much more common and that if you carry twins and you lose one of them that you have a miscarriage early on and no bleeding or cramping it's just the baby stops growing if you have a miscarriage and you don't go back to having your regular cycle whatever that is for you that's absolutely a reason to get checked out the lives of both Risa and her baby are in grave danger I was really really scared I thought she was gone that must be terrifying to find out when you get to the hospital your wife is still pregnant but she's very sick and they don't know how far along she is or about the health of the baby or anything like that and i'm like whoa i've never heard of anything like this sorry your wife is suffering from doctors tell john that risa is suffering from a condition called eclampsia the treatment of eclampsia is initially to treat the seizures and to stabilize the fetus and then ultimately delivery doctors successfully perform an emergency c-section to remove the full-term baby girl wow that is a lot so eclampsia is a life-threatening condition and it is often very complicated to take care of someone who has really significant preeclampsia or eclampsia, which is the addition of seizures to what we were just talking about. Finally, one of the nurses comes out. They tell me she's flatlined. I'm like, oh, no, 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 no. I didn't know what I was going to do. That was my life. She was my life. Now we're going to save mommy. Crash cart. They are able to resuscitate Risa, but she remains in a coma as her daughter, a healthy five pounds, four ounces, meets dad for the first time. It is quite unusual to have someone code or what he's saying flatline, which is essentially your heart stops beating because of this. The depiction they show is relatively inaccurate. She is, you know, having surgery and she's asleep, uh, but she doesn't have a breathing tube or anything. So if you have a emergency C-section under general anesthesia, which it sounds like she did because of how severe her illness was, they're generally going to do general anesthesia and that's going to be where you have a breathing tube in your mouth. The depiction, not super accurate, but the discussion of the events is certainly something that I can comprehend happening just in the way that they discuss it. When she finally did wake up, I was very excited. I'm so keyed up, but so full of energy. I literally stand on my hands, put my feet against the wall, and I did push-ups against the wall. We had a baby. Can you imagine waking up from a coma, having no idea you're pregnant, and then your husband does a handstand? I was shocked. <laughs> Which I, I just applaud them sharing that and then also having the actor perform that act. But then to be told after your handstanding husband stands back up, you had a baby and now you've been in a coma for several days. I can't even comprehend how you would start to process that. If that were me, I would have a complicated set of emotions to go through and it would be confusing to say the least. You'd miscarried the twin in March and went on to have her. 
I probably held her about five seconds and said, that's nice, and handed her back. I really didn't want to be a mother because I was in such shock. You know what I really like about this episode is that she has been so honest about that. So I said I would think she would have a lot of processing to do and that would be very difficult. A theme I've noticed in a lot of these videos is that the people said like, I immediately loved the baby and I instantly, you know, was on board with being unexpectedly a mother. I like that she went into a little bit of, you know, I held the baby. I wasn't connected to the baby. I didn't want to be a mother right then. I wasn't prepared for that. And I immediately went into postpartum blues. Bad. We were in the hospital eight days and then went home. And it was probably a good three or four weeks before I was really comfortable of even taking care of her. Baby blues tends to be only for about two weeks and generally not debilitating symptoms. Postpartum depression can be mild or debilitating, but it must go on longer than two weeks postpartum for us to diagnose it as postpartum depression. It can also happen further after delivery. She was so beautiful and sweet and small. She was a really good baby. And I think that was what helped. And we named her Jessica. Jessica Morgan. She's very special and she's a miracle. I've never thought that I was a miracle or thought about that way. I just kind of thought that I was born and I was here. I think it's more of a miracle that my mom's alive and that she was here to raise me. To this day, she is like my rock. She's my best friend. I couldn't live without her. There's no way. She shows that they have a really great relationship. Having a really complicated delivery and a traumatic delivery increases the risk of postpartum depression. So she was in a situation that made her very high risk and I'm not surprised by that. I just think it's really great that she's candidly discussing how this affected her and her immediate feelings towards the baby because it's oftentimes very isolating for people and they sometimes feel like this is something that makes them a bad parent or that they will never connect with their baby if they have these complicated emotions. It's just not true. You can overcome that. If you're not subscribed, please hit that subscribe button. If you like this video, give it a thumbs up. And if you don't like this video, Give it a thumbs down, I don't care. Just do something. Be kind to yourself, to each other, to me. In the comments, be kind. And I will see you next time.